गुड मॉर्निंग एवं तो हमें Awesome. So we're back again. One more day. One more prelims question. One more important day. By the way, guys, over the weekend, Saturday to Monday, we might actually not have a class. not might we will not have a class saturday to monday i'm going to chennai so the weekend i'll actually be in chennai so i'll not have uh, access to all these internet and stuff so saturday let's go ha So anybody in Chennai, you can always uh, we can always catch up. All any student in Chennai. I'll be in what I call Singara Chennai. <coughs> Having said that, no, I each expression is Dutch, Barsha. Each expression is Dutch. I do speak German. Bit, bit, a little, little, but yeah. Having said that, let us begin first uh, questions for the day. Consider the following statements regarding Dhola Vira. Here, the walls were made of sandstone or limestone instead of mud bricks. In any other, uh, in uh, as in many other Harappan sites, it was a hub for manufacturing jewelry made of shells and semi-precious stones. Extensive mortal remains of humans have been discovered at Dhola Vira. Which of the following statements about Isar are correct? One and two, one and three, three only, one, two, three. The answer must be A. See, Dolavira has a site of citadel, has a very nice uh, fortified citadel. <clears throat> Dolavira has a nice uh, fortified citadel, a middle town, a lower town, basically three parts, and uh, the walls are made of sandstone or limestone instead of mud bricks. Now, if you remember, Dolavira is in Gujarat, and I told you many times that in Gujarat, Saurashtra region, we do not see presence of uh, baked bricks. Archaeologists cite a cascading series of water reservoirs, like check dams, out of fortifications, two multi-purpose grounds, one of which was used for festivities and as a marketplace. Nine gates with unique designs and funerary architecture, featuring a tumulus, hemispherical structures like Buddhist stupas, as with uh, some of the unique features of Dolivera site. While unlike graves or other IBC sites, no mortal remains of humans have ever been discovered at Dolivera. Okay, the answer is A. Next question. Consider the following statement: That Sarnath, where Buddha gave his first sermon, the stone statue has a hand gesture called Dharma Chakra Mudra. Statues of uh, standing Buddha signifies rising or uh, rising to teach after reaching Nirvana. <coughs> Statues of walking Buddha depict either beginning of his journey towards enlightenment or returning after giving a sermon without the following statements is or are correct <laughs> buddhist statues and their meanings
Good morning. Good morning, Rana. Good morning. The answer is uh, D. At Sarnath, Buddha gave his first sermon. The stone statue has a hand gesture called Dharma Chakra Mudra. It is Dharma Chakra Mudra. Good morning, Kavita. After many days, experts say that Buddha is depicted in over a hundred uh, poses around the world. While sitting Buddha, most common depiction is believed to be Buddha teaching or meditating. The standing Buddha signifies his rising after teaching and after arising to teach after reaching Nirvana. And the walking Buddha is either beginning his journey towards enlightenment or returning after giving a sermon. This is the least common of the Buddhist postures as is seen mostly in Thailand. <laughs> Bhumi Sparsha Mudra is later not during the sermons after enlightenment bhumi sparsha mudra sarnath wala statue is dharma chakra parivartana uh, preaching uh, ramya if it is world history for gs i don't think normal love is in, um, required i mean it's it's way too much for to study for world history i prefer uh, arjun dev or NCRT ka book hai, Story of Civilization, or sorry, History of the Contemporary World, 1 and 2, NCRT ka, both hai. Consider the following statements regarding Kesariya Buddha Stupa. Kesariya Buddha Stupa is located in Chimpa, Champaran district in um, Bihar. It is regarded as one of the smallest Buddhist stupas in the world. The Archaeological Survey of India has declared it a protected monument of national importance. Which of the following statements is or are correct? One only, one in three, one in two, one to three. Kesariya Buddha. Answer is B. Kesare Buddha. He is a Buddhist stupa located in East Champaran district of Bihar. It is located about 110 kilometers from the state capital Patna. Patna is 610 km. It has a circumference of almost 400 feet, circumference, standing about 104 feet tall, high. The first construction of nationally protected stupa is dated back at to 3rd century BC. It is regarded as the Buddh largest Buddhist stupa ever built in the world. The original Kesariya stupa is believed to be dated back till you know, Emperor Ashoka as the remains of Ashokan pillar have been discovered in this stupa, in this Kesariya stupa. The remains of Ashoka's pillars have been discovered. Now, and the Archaeological Survey of India has declared it as a protected monument of national importance recently. The locals call the stupa Devalaya, meaning house of gods. However, a larger part of the stupa is yet to be developed as it is I mean, today as under uh, vegetation. It's been occupied by nature. So we've got to get that uh, thing done. Because of the following statements, majority of the temples built during Gupta period were rock cut temples. Dashavatara temple and Bitargaon temple were built during Gupta age. Which of the following above statements is or are incorrect? Which of the following statements is or are incorrect? A. Structural temples from Dusha, the Dashavatara temple, Bithargao temple, they both are right. Typical temple structures. 5th century AD, Kumar Gupta ruled 40 years over north central India. Gupta has built structural temples distinctly different from ancient rock cut temples. Most of you forgot to answer this appropriately. Majority of temples built during Gupta period were not rock cut temples. They were actually structural temples built using stone, right? 
है कि नहीं रॉक का टेंपल्स पहले के थे सातवाहना पीरियड यू सी नो कन्हेरी के कन्हेरी टेंपल दोज वंस ओके कैसे तो फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग शंकरलिपी स्क्रिप्ट शंकरलिपी स्क्रिप्ट डिस्क्राइब्स ऑर्नेट स्पाइरल कैरेक्टर्स दैट लुक लाइक कॉन्च शेल्स और शंकर्स इट इज फाउंड टू बी एंग्रेव्ड ऑन पिलर टेंपल्स कॉलम्स एंड रॉक सरफेसेस इट वाज डिस्कवर्ड बाय एन इंग्लिश स्कॉलर जेम्स प्रिंसर व्हिच ऑफ द स्टेटमेंट्स इज और आर करेक्ट वन ओनली वन एंड टू वन एंड थ्री वन टू थ्री शंकरलिपी स्क्रिप्ट Shankalipi or shell script is a term used by scholars to describe ornate spiral characters assumed to be Brahmi derivatives that look like conch shells or shankas. Most of the Shankalipi script are actually found in inscriptions across North Central India and date back to between 4th and 8th century. Both Shankalipi and Brahmi script are actually stylized scripts used primarily for names and signatures. This is basic Shankalipi script is also known as shell scripts. The script was discovered in 1836 on a brass sort of a trident, Trishul, in Uttarakhand's Barahat region by James Prince, who was also the founding editor of the Journal of the Asiatic Society of Bengal. Prominent sites of shell scripts are basically Mundeshwari Temple in Bihar, Udaygiri Caves of Madhya Pradesh, um, Mansar in Maharashtra. Some of the cave sites in Gujarat and Maharashtra. In fact, shell scripts are also reported not only in India but also in Java, Borneo. It is found engraved in pillars and rock surfaces, even in Bali, Java, Borneo, those places also. Okay. Now, next question. Battle of Saraghat was fought between. Battle of Saraghat. Jaldi, jaldi. Answer. Mughals and Ahom, Lachit Borpu Khan. It actually talks about how the uh, the Assamese general Lachit Borpu Khan is credited to have defeated Mughals in the Battle of Saraighat. A more similar name comes from the Battle of Saragarhi. Saragarhi, 19th century Punjab. Where you have this 21 Sikhs who fought against the Afghan Pathan army. बैटल ऑफ सारा घरी ये सारा घाट सारा घाट असम इन हिस्ट्री ऑफ मॉडर्न इंडिया माउंट हैरियट इज एसोसिएटेड विद माउंट हैरियट पाइका रेबेलियन एंग्लो मैरी वॉर्स एंग्लो सिख वॉर एंग्लो मणिपुर वॉर हाँ यस सारा घरी इज केसरी मूवी Mount Harriet is actually associated with Anglo-Manipur War of the 1891. Yes, perfect, Bernika. Perfect. Par, Kavitha. Good, good, good. Antari, par, Amya. Very good. 
it is um it actually talks about uh, how the british fought in the war including maharaja kulchandra dhwaja singh was exiled to british penal colony in andaman islands in manipur history anglo manipur war is considered one of the epoch one of the most important phases where uh, it was fought between kingdom of manipur and british over a month in 1891 okay now patharu ghat uprising during the british rule was a working class movement tribal revolt peasant uprising and caste movement answer this guys i'm just coming answer this one second good morning sir of Patharogat. Answer is C. After British annexation of Assam in 1926, large, large, large amount of surveys were done. On the basis of such surveys, British began to impose land taxes and much to the resentment of farmers. In 1893, British government decided to increase. Agriculture land tax to by 70 to 80 percent. Peasants began protesting by organizing Raj males or peaceful people's conventions. Now, I have one quick question. Which viceroy was involved in tea mania, which eventually developed Assam? The tea mania. Where Assam mein jo T estates banwaye the. Viceroy Canning, yes. It was Viceroy Canning who was well known for conducting tea mania. Now, the Pagadi Sambal Jatta movement during the British period is related to farmer's hesitation against British laws, social religious reform movement, restriction on the sale of forest produce by British, none of the above. Pagdi Sambhal Jatta movement. It was actually a successful farm agitation that forced the British government to repeal all the three laws relating to agricultural restrictions in 1907. Bhagat Singh ke chacha, uncle, Ajit Singh, was the main force behind this movement. Eventually, Pagdi Sambal Jatta became a call slogan even for Bhagat Singh. He wanted to channel people's anger over the farm laws to topple the colonial government. Now, consider the following statements. After undergoing several changes, the tricolor flag was adopted as a national flag at a Congress committee meeting in Karachi, 1931. Indian flag was adopted in its present form during independence on 15th August, 1947. Which of the following statements is or are incorrect? Which of the statements is incorrect?
Answer is B. Most of you are right. Indian flag was adopted in its present form during a meeting and constant assembly on June, July 22nd, 1947. First national flag consisted of three horizontal stripes of red, yellow, green. It is said to have been hoisted on August 7th, 1906 at uh, the Parsi Bagan Square uh, near uh, Lower Circular Road in Calcutta. And uh, after undergoing several changes, the tricolor was adopted as our national flag at a Congress Committee meeting in Karachi, 1931. The 1921 mate was Pingali Venkaya, who met Mahatma Gandhi and proposed a basic design for the flag consisting of two red and green bands. Consider the following statements and mark the options which is correct. The Indra deity signifies Rita or cosmic order. Agni, the fire god, was the god of whom and was considered as intermediary between gods and men. Soma was associated with plants and herbs. Pushan was the god of the roads, herdsmen, and cattle. One and two, all of these, one, three, four, none of the above. Indra, answer is C. Yes, Indra is the god of cosmic order. Uh, Indra is the destroyer of the cosmic order. Okay. Um, Agni, intermediary between gods. Soma, associated with plants and herbs. And Pushan is the god of roads, herdsmen, and cattle. Answer is C. 2, 3, 4. Consider the following statements during Harappan civilization. The pottery of Harappan culture consisted of many wheel made ware turned in various shapes and sizes but without any colors. They used various mortars and cement of limestone, gypsum and mica. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Saurav, you there? Sandeep, Saurav, Kunal, Bhargav, Sai Kiran, Antaripa, hmm, Path, see, yes, Harappan. Pottery had was baked or burnt clay pottery as well as it did have paintings, okay, with same or two or more colors. The pottery of Harappan culture consisted of mainly wheel based wares turned into different sizes, different shapes, different colors out of the well navigated alluvium of the Indus. The color and other characteristics of the wares depended totally upon the composition of the clay used and the techniques of firing under either oxidizing or reducing conditions. Harappans also experimented with various mortars and uh, cements made of burnt limestone, gypsum, mica among other major components. Consider the following statements about the religious practices of later Vedic culture. Vishnu and Rudra, which were similar deities in the Rig Veda became extremely important. People did not believe in idolatry. People worshipped gods with the form of trees and animals. Some of the important yagnas were Ashwamedha, Vajapeya, Rajasuya, etc. Which of the following statements is or are true?
Answer is C. Perfect. Everybody is almost perfect. Answer is C. Yes. Statements are true. Is 1 and 4. Vishnu, Rudra were smaller deities. By gods. And uh, yes. Some of the important Yagnas were Ashwamedha, Vajpaya, Rajasvi, etc. In the later Vedic period. Yes. Because they are asking the later Vedic culture. Consider the following statements and mark the options which is correct. Yes, adultery started in a later Vedic period. Puranas contain thoughts on the mystery of life and universe mythology. The main crop of Rigvedic people was uh, barley. Rigveda does not throw light on beliefs and practices of non Aryans. One and two, three only, all of these, none of the above. Answer A. Yes. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, good morning. Late? I think even Prapurna. I haven't seen Prapurna today. Answer is A. Because the following statements regarding later Vedic states and their territories. The term Rashtra became the most important during later Vedic phase. Battle of the Ten Kings gives us the names of ten kings who actually participated in a war against Sudhas and involved in the states of Puru, Yadus, Turvasa, Anus and Druhyus. Which of the above statements is or are correct? The Battle of the Ten Kings. The Dasaragna Yuddha. Dasaragna Yuddha. That one. Answer is C. The term Rashtra actually became very, very important in the later Vedic phase. And the Battle of Ten Kings actually gives us the names of the kings who participated in the battle. It may say we don't know all the ten kings' names, but we know Sudhas, the leader of the Bharata clan, and the others, Puru, Yadu, Turvasa, Nus and Druhus, the five of the major tribes which fought against the Sudhas. Which of the following statements is not correct feature of Rigvedic economy? Primarily pastoralist economy, cultivation of multiple cereals, abundance of wage earners, sedentary agricultural society. Yes, the Saragni Uthanli was later compiled as Mahabharata. <laughs>
answer is C. There were no primarily wage earners in the early Vedic period or in fact in the Vedic period itself. Wage earning itself, Vetani, Vetanika means the term wage earners, Vetanika. They do not exist at that time. No, they were all self-sufficient, primarily pastoralist, cultivating multiple cereals with sedentary agricultural society established. The word God, world is God and God is my soul is the philosophy contained in. I think it is, we seen this question yesterday, no? I think by mistake repeat ho gaya hai. The term world is God and God is my soul is actually part of Upanishadas. It's a philosophical question. This also got repeated. Okay, sorry, one second. I think I messed up in the editing. The ninth mandala of Rigveda Samhita is devoted wholly to Varuna, the cosmic order, Soma, and the God who is named after the drink, Urvashi, and the heaven, Indra, and his elephant. Ninth Mandala is dedicated to Isme Pasoge. See, these are what I call the bouncers. Every year, history ke question paper me. ऐसे एक दो बाउंसर तो मिल ही जाते हैं। These are questions where chances of you actually knowing the exact answer is very less. Skip. Ninth Mandala is actually dedicated to Soma and the God who is named after the drink. Because of the following statements about Rigveda, there was widespread use of horses, agriculture was a predominant economic activity. Which of the following statements is are correct about Rigveda? Answer is uh, A, you know, pastoralism was a primary activity, not agriculture. Consider the following statements. Sorry, one second. Swami Shraddhanath was a social reformer associated with Arya Samaj. Gurukul Kangri Vishwavidyalai was founded by him in 1902. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Answer this. I'll just be back. Answer this.
सॉरी गाइस हाँ स्वामी श्रद्धानंद यस 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 अभी तो मॉनसून सीजन है सो सारे ऑनलाइन क्लासेस हर जगह डिस्टर्ब होते जाएंगे बारिश गिरेगा इंटरनेट स्लो हो जाएगा ऑल दैट विल हैपन डोंट वी राइट डोंट माइंड स्वामी श्रद्धानंद यस वाज अ सोशल रिफॉर्मर एसोसिएटेड विद आर्य समाज सी दिस मैन वाज आल्सो इन्वॉल्व विद द किसान मूवमेंट ऑल इंडिया किसान सभा स्वामी श्रद्धानंद वॉज नोन एज ओरिजिनली नोन एज महात्मा मुंशी राम he was very active in reviving hinduism uh, as well as fighting the british uh, a similar name is sahajanand it was swami sahajanand who was associated with uh, kisan movement shraddhanand was associated with arya samaj same name confuse ho jaoge be careful okay he was the founder of the gurukul kangri university he was a follower of dhanand saraswati um towards the end of his life he was very active in the shuddhi movement ye jo shuddhi movement chal raha tha na at that time we see him in current affairs uh, he was born on february 22 1856 in a village called talwan in jalandhar district in punjab originally known as mahatma munshi ram bij 1880 he came in direct contact with swami dhananand of uh, arya samaj shraddhanand wrote a book called hindu sangathan and uh, he called untouchability a curse and a blot on the reputation of hindus In 1926, Swami Shraddhanand was assassinated by a man called Abdul Rashid. Um, um, very similar name is Shahjanand. Shahjanand is a Kisan Sabha movement leader in the 1920s. Shraddhanand is Arya Samaj leader. Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Consider the following: Ranjit Singh was the only Indian king to employ a large number of European officers in the army. French general Jean Francis Allard was uh, recruited to modernize his army. Which are the above statements? These are all correct. Maharaja Ranjit Singh. This year, I am anticipating a lot of questions on Punjab, Khalistan, the Khalsa forces, Mughal Punjab relations, and all that. Ranjit Singh, yes, had Jean Francis Allard as the guy who was recruited into his army. Actually, a statue of Ranjit Singh ruled Punjab for almost four years has recently been inaugurated in Lahore. Two years, one year back, it was recruited. Twenty twenty four, pre. Ranjit Singh was born on November thirteen, seventeen eighteen, Guru Janamala. at that time punjab was actually ruled by powerful chieftains called uh, missiles uh, our territory is called missiles so uh, bara missile the ranjit singh overthrew all the warring or fighting missiles and he established a unified sikh empire by 1799 ranjit singh was actually the leader of the sukher chakyar missile sukher chakyar missile he Finally, unified all the other missiles. All the other missiles is basically like a feudal territorial kingdom types. He unified them, and uh, eventually Ranjit Singh was also given the title Lion of Punjab or Sher of Punjab because he actually stemmed the tide of Afghan invaders in Lahore, and uh, which remained capital of Ranjit Singh until his death. And uh, see, uh, Ranjit Singh's general was uh, Hari Singh Nalwa. Who built the fort of Jamrud? At the time of his death, he was the only sovereign leader left in India, and all others have been come under the British rule. He also employed a large number of European officers, especially French. Now, look, you must understand, Ranjit Singh was not the first guy to employ Europeans. Ranjit Singh se pehle, Tipu uh, uh, Sultan also had European officers in his uh, army, right? Tipu Sultan also had European officers in his army. Ranjit Singh's transnational empire spread over several states. His empire included former Mughal provinces of Lahore, Multan, besides Kabul and entire Peshawar. The boundaries went almost up until Ladakh. Zorawar Singh, a general from Lahore, had conquered even Ladakh region for Ranjit Singh. It was after Ranjit Singh's death, during the Anglo Anglo Sikh wars, that the territory of Kashmir was sold to one of the Hindu Dogra Rajput governors, known as. Uh, 
Gulab Singh who established the kingdom of Jammu and Kashmir. Um, Ranjit Singh was the ruler of this area called Punjab, the land of five uh, seas. And he turned Harbinder Sahib at Amritsar into a golden temple by covering it completely with gold. He is also credited with funding Hazur Sahib Gurudwara at the final resting place of Guru Gobind Singh in Nanded. This is basically Ranjit Singh's total extent. His kingdom, his army was quite modern. Military officers, he was definitely not the first guy to have a western military. Okay. Ranjit Singh was not the first person to have a western military. In 1839, Ranjit Singh died and his empire completely began to disintegrate into pieces. It was in 1839 that Ranjit Singh's kingdom started to disintegrate into smaller uh, territories and smaller regions. After his death, his sons Kharak Singh became the king who was unfortunately killed. Later, another son Nihal Singh came to power. He was also killed. Finally, after Ranjit Singh's death, remember this always, his kingdom got split across two people, the Hindu Dogras and Sikh Sidhan Waliyas. Sikho mein aur Rajputs ke beech mein jhagda ho gaya. The lady, this lady is Rani Jindkor. Jindkor was supported by Hindu Dogras. And this is Ranjit Singh's last son, Dulip Singh. Also the last king of Punjab kingdom. The kingdom of Punjab. The last king of Punjab. Dulip Singh eventually was defeated in battle. Yes, and uh, Dulip Singh was sent away to London where he converted to Christianity, married a lady called Bamba. Her name is Bamba Dulip Singh. Then he also, Dulip Singh had a daughter called Sophia Dulip Singh. Sophia Dulip Singh, daughter of Maharaja Dulip Singh, the last king of Punjab, was instrumental leader in the women's suffragette movement of London where she fought for the voting rights of women in London. <laughs> Dulip Singh's daughter, Sophia Dulip Singh. This is what eventually became of Dulip Singh, unfortunately. Because of the following statements, Rani Lakshmi Bhai died in the Battle of Jhansi in June 1858. Rani Lakshmi Bhai was married to the king of Jhansi, Gang Raja Gangadhar Nevalkar in 1842. Which of the following statements, these are incorrect. D, D, D. Answer is A is incorrect. Many people are putting D, but A is actually incorrect. Good morning, Prapurna. Very late. Rani Lakshmi Bhai died in the Battle of Koteki Sarai. 1858. Koteki Sarai. Yes, she was married to Gangadhar Rao Nevalkar of Jhansi. Rani was born in uh, November 1828 as Manikarnika Dambe. She was married to Raja of Jhansi, Raja Gangadhar Rao Nevalkar. She also had a son called Damodar Rao who died within four months of his birth. Following the death of in her infant, her husband adopted a cousin's, name, cousin's child, Anand Rao, and gave him the title Damodar Rao.
Raburna, for the first time, for the first, this is for the first time in my 12 years of teaching that a student said, Sir, I am late to the class because my coffee was late. I actually like the reason. I actually like the reason. Achha. Good, 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 good reason. Good reason. Dallas, he refused to acknowledge the child and applied the doctrine of labs and annexed the state. And however, Rani Lakshmi Bhai refused to accept the Lord Dalhousie's decision. Rani of Jhansi gave a very tough fight and she eventually she was defeated. In Badla of Kothe Ki Sarai, near Pool Bag of Gwalior. I don't even know why you are sorry. It's a good reason, no? But you are thinking innovatively. Doctrine of Labs was an annexation policy. I repeat this always. Doctrine of Labs was an annexation policy used by Dalhousie, not introduced by Dalhousie. Doctrine of Labs has already been there from 1844. It was created by East India Company, Court of Directors and not Dalhousie. Got it? According to this doctrine, any princely state under direct or indirect rule of this East India Company where the ruler did not have any legal male heir would be directly and completely annexed by the company. Any adopted son of the Indian ruler could not be proclaimed as the heir to the kingdom until and it is such adoption is actually approved by the Calcutta Council and such adopt approvals must be an exception but not a compulsion. Rani Lakshmi Bhai was also called the warrior queen. Her famous quote about her. And uh, she was known to have been a very, very fierce fighter. And along with uh, Rani Lakshmi Bhai, there is another lady called Jalkari Bhai, a member of the Rani Lakshmi Bhai's army, the heroine who saved the queen. Okay, who disguised herself as the queen and actually died in the Battle of Jhansi. After that, only Battle of Koti Kesarai happens in Gwalior. Hugh Gross, Sir Hugh Gross and his, uh, in, in his book, actually a senior British Army officer at that time, described her as personable, clever and beautiful. He even went to the extent of call saying that she was the only man among the rebels. Rashmi Bhai's palace also known as Rani Mahal has now been converted into a museum. And uh, 1957, the government of India introduced two postage stamps in her memory. Jansi was recaptured under the leadership of which of the British officers? John Nicholson, Sir Campbell, Hugh Gross and none of the above. Hugh Gross, Sir Hugh Gross, Sir Hugh Gross, recaptured. Because the following uh, regarding Thiruvalluvar, the Tamil poet Saint Thiruvalluvar belonged to the Alvar Bhakti tradition. Valluvar Kottam is the tallest statue of India dedicated to Thiruvalluvar. Which of the above statements is or are correct? Thiruvalluvar. Answer is D. Thiruvalluvar is a celebrated Tamil poet. 
very famous for his writing tirukkural he is actually sangamera person he is thought to have been lived between 4th century bc and 1st century bc the tamil poet mamulanar of the sangam period mentioned that tiruvalluvar was the greatest tamil scholar ye alwar nahi naina nahi to alwar naina to baad mein aaya tha tirukkural of tiruvalluvar was divided into 133 sections with 1330 couplets or kurals or two two line poems text is divided into three parts with teaching on dharma artha kama main ideas in 16th century a temple dedicated to tiruvalluvar was built within the ekambareshwara temple complex in malapur 1976 a temple memorial called valluvar kottam was built in chennai it houses one of the largest auditoriums in asia 133 foot tall tiruvalluvar statue stands at kanyakumari as well so valluvar kottam is actually a auditorium not a statue it's actually an auditorium and not a statue okay so having said that that's end of the session for today guys those were some of the questions that we were uh, bound to discuss today i will uh, be sharing a question now immediately after the class i'll give you a question of uh, uh, mains and uh, night 9 pm we will have discussion of uh, upsc csc mains uh, question and then we'll finish off world war 1 in the night thank you guys you have a nice day i'll see you at 9 pm bye bye